So welcome all to this uh, afternoon session on coronal infections or a more scientific term would be microbial keratitis. Uh, I'm excited to see quite a few. Uh, it's quite a rare sight in KSOS to see so many people for KSOS for the coronal infections through there. Uh, my, I will introduce my co-panelists as I go by. I'll just give a brief introduction about the infection that is there in our part of the world. So infective keratitis or microbial keratitis as was mentioned about 20 years ago is the second most common cause of visual loss and it makes people really blind. About 6.8 million people are blind because of that and of which about 1 million people are become bilaterally blind. So if you look at the latest data from the Ministry of Family and uh, Family Affairs and Welfare and Health, you can see that among the most productive age group, that is from 0 to 49 years, corneal blindness is the most common cause of blindness. So that is the importance of this. But if you look at the standard textbooks, we see that uh, a lot of treatment paradigms are very different from what is practiced in most of the big institutes. So a lot of textbooks written by very famous authors, they suggest monotherapy, which is a big no in our country. I think in, in um, most part of the world, Western world, fungal keratitis contribute maybe 5 to 10 percent. Maybe exceptions like Florida are there, but generally speaking, it will be very minuscule number. But in a, in a part of the country, in a part, uh, we can see that the fungal infections predominate in a good, good majority of the series. And also the antibody resistance is very, very high in our country, you know, it's uh, the protoclonal resistance is anywhere between 30 to 40 percent, which makes that monotherapy is not a good choice for uh, treating a coronal infection. So if you get an infection like this, what do you think? So there is a somewhat pretty demarcated uh, uh, infiltrate with a lot of hypopion and an inflamed eye. You think it is bacterial, you scrape and uh, sometimes you see that it is, uh, we are in this particular case I found fungal filaments. So we cannot rest alone, only on clinical features alone. It is maybe true for uh, virgin cases, but it is definitely not uh, enough. Maybe for early cases it is still, uh, maybe it will give you some help, but real life situation is very different. A lot of people use antibiotic steroid combination, NSAID will totally alter the picture on the cornea. And what you see clinically is often a result of the virulence of the organism, a lot of host factors and polypharmacy as I mentioned. So uh, this is a prospective study done on 15 cornea specialists and uh, they were asked to categorize based on the clinical appearances, bacterial, fungal or parasitic. About 70% were able to do that. I'm talking about experienced cornea specialists. But if you want to look at the numbers based on the organism and all that, pseudomonas, only less than 50% could identify that. A similar, a similar thing is found in, a, in the IUVS article in which they compared uh, two sets of doctors, one from the Proctor Foundation and one from Aravind. And the, uh, the chances that they are right would be less than 70%. 68% in the Arvind group, 63% in the Proctor group. And this, if you want to see this genus and all that, it is not possible at all. It is less than 46%, which, which, which tells you that it is uh, chances less than that flipping a coin. So that is one part of it. The other part is that the human body has a lot of bacteria, viruses and parasites. We have about 1 trillion cells and about more than 1 trillion bacteria are sitting on us. So a lot of them are good, essential and protective. And we don't know, uh, some of them turn pathogenic in certain situations. And eye is supposed to be a uh, site in which the number of bacteria is less compared to that of skin. So in our session on corneal infections today, we have uh, Dr. Savitri Sharma, who is, who can be called the uh, Kuhn of Indian Microbiology. She is going to talk to us about practical management of uh, infections. Uh, Dr. Rajesh could not make it because of a medical issue and I will be covering his talk at least partly. The third talk would be done by Anita Jabbar. Akhandibiba keratitis would be done by, would be uh, held by Dr. Malik Arjun Haralgi from uh, Shankara Hospital, Shimoga. 
and surgical management by Dr. Madhu, a fellowship corneal surgeon in uh, practicing in Telangana and Andhra. So I'll move to the next presentation, which is from Dr. Savitri Sharma, that is a practical microbiology for clinicians. Dr. Savitri, uh, you must be all knowing, uh, she is the Director Emeritus of the LVPA Laboratory Network. She is the President of the International Ocular Microbiology and uh, Immunology Society. And she's like, she has too many firsts in her, uh, in her, uh, uh, in her uh, area. Like she identified the first acanthibia keratitis, microsporidal keratitis. And uh, more than anything, she is my best teacher. Welcome, ma'am. Good afternoon, all of you. Thank you so much uh, for having me here. Uh, it's a pleasure to come to uh, Kerala, really. Such a beautiful place. We don't get tired of looking out of the room. It is just, uh, uh, it's a real heaven to uh, look outside at the greenery that we see. We are very pleased to be here. So I'll just uh, uh, begin uh, by thanking uh, Anil uh, for having me here and uh, giving me a chance to talk to all of you. Is is my audio okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's begin. As he showed very, I like the introduction that he gave. You have uh, lots of organisms around and on your body, inside your body. Actually, you should be loving them and not be afraid and uh, uh, worried unless we see them as an infection, which is very rare. Actually, the infections we are seeing is so less compared to the abundance that they are in there. So much there, uh, but they don't uh, are, uh, they are, they are not really our enemies. And very few and many times is because of our own mistakes that they end up uh, giving us infection. Uh, so here is a diagram to show you that various types of organisms are there, bacteria, fungi. And now I'll be talking a little bit about parafungus, which is not real fungus, but looks like fungus, viruses and parasites. You can see here uh, there is a, is my arrow will show? Yeah. Uh, so these are, uh, we have recently or newly uh, we are recognizing all organisms are always there. It's only our inability to recognize them. And we end up recognizing them now and then we say that they are emerging or they are new. But they have always been there and it is we who have been lacking the skill to recognize them. Uh, so uh, can anyone say what these are? Demodex. Uh, you see on your, uh, you are seeing in patients and the eyelashes and then they also can cause keratitis. So uh, clinically, we would like you to look at a case and tell us whether it is viral or non-viral because microbiological methods of diagnosis depend very much on that. Uh, we have different set of tests for looking at uh, non-viral and finding out non-viral, which would consist of all except viral. And the viral requires different set of um, uh, methods to identify. So we believe in direct microscopy of the cornea scraping. The sample should be directly from the cornea and not from conjunctiva or uh, somewhere else. And uh, we, of course, believe in culture so that we can prove what we have seen in the smear, uh, whether it is confirmed or not. And it also gives us organism uh, to do the antibiotic susceptibility and further tests we can do. But it is a direct microscopy which gives the uh, immediate and early uh, diagnosis. And of course, the laboratories which are able to do antigen detection methods, they are needed for viruses. And uh, molecular methods are also more in use uh, for the viral diagnosis. And the central part of the whole thing is the clinical correlation. A microbiology is giving a, a name of an organism which doesn't make sense to you uh, will have to be uh, seen with a pinch of uh, salt because you need to make sense of what has been uh, reported. This slide I made uh, just for those who do not have an institutional setup. And you can have actually in your own clinic uh, just very few simple things. Uh, the only thing expensive in this is the microscope, which again, if you are uh, buying a, just a general uh, 
uh, binocular microscope may not cost more than 50,000 or so. Uh, a good ones cost actually 1 lakh. A very, very good microscopes are about 1 lakh. Uh, but uh, 50,000 also you can get and have very small things. Now I have uh, highlighted here trypan blue which we recently have added to our uh, uh, armamentarium especially in the secondary centers. LV Prasad Eye Institute as you know has more than 20 secondary centers where small hospital with one doctor and a few nurses. Uh, so there also we have microbiology set up con mostly consisting of these which are listed here. Anil mentioned that uh, uh, in uh, especially abroad in western countries they see more of bacterial uh, keratitis and therefore they do not so much uh, worry about uh, uh, doing the laboratory diagnosis because they consider most of it is bacterial and they treat with uh, broad spectrum antibiotics uh, but we cannot really do that uh, in, in in India uh, because going by what the data he gave and here is I have a comparative data of different countries the blue ones are bacterial and red ones are fungal so you can see in uh, some countries India included Thailand uh, we have in Africa, we have so much of fungus. So you cannot do without checking the corneal scraping whether it is bacterial or fungal. And then only think of treating the patient. Otherwise, you will be making a mistake if you consider everything as bacterial. Uh, however, it is uh, in US and Western, other Western developed countries, the picture may be uh, different. Uh, this is just to show that in our secondary centers, this is a setup I mentioned the, and we have been able to do cornea scraping direct microscopy. We have now added tip and blue. Those who are doing KOH, KOH is oldest method that is still being done uh, for identification of fungal, fungal elements in cornea scraping. So uh, this is to show you that in KOH not only fungal elements. Uh, I was talking to uh, Anita about this uh, microsporidia. You can see these are microsporidial rice grain like things. If with a proper lighting, uh, you will be able to see the microsporidia. It can't be by seen very clearly in KOH and uh, with little bit difficulty, you can see even the nocardia. So, uh, this method, a very old method, it can be just be mastered by you yourself and not uh, even need a microbiologist to identify many of these uh, elements which can be present in the cornea scraping. Tripan blue is something which is available to you after uh, in the operation theatre. You can make uh, just directly, I add just one drop of glycerol in 5 ml of uh, tripan blue to keep it moist and then you can just put that one drop on the cornea scraping and then the filaments become blue in color. So they become more clear uh, compared to KOH uh, alone without any color. These are all gram stain pictures. They, uh, even you can keep gram stain is commercially available a set of stains. So you can learn it's very easy. It's written on the bottles how to do the gram stain and you can learn that. So Having these is very useful. This is one of the studies we have published in British Journal of Ophthalmology based on what we found in secondary centers just on the basis of gram stain and KOH. These are again to show you a in uh, This was a case in Bhuvaneshwar. I had seen the Dr. Srikant Sahu was very sure that this is going to be fungal, this patient. And when he came to, he sent off the patient giving antifungal. He, after he was so sure, he comes to the lab asking, just I just want to find out. Uh, I, I've sent back the sent off the patient already, and we saw a canthamoeba like this. So this uh, l later on he published this that how mistaken he was. Kevich, Kevich, very, very clearly you can see a canthamoeba cis. Uh, so it can be often uh, misdiagnosed acanthamoeba keratitis and uh, mostly we misdiagnose as HSV but there it was uh, fungal. In 45% cases we found in an analysis that 45% cases are thought as fungal keratitis without scraping acanthamoeba. And uh, the classical features ring infiltrate is very very misleading because we do think that it is pathognomonic of acanthamoeba. But here is one case we published 
uh, that looked ring. This is another one, Dr. Sujata Das in Bhuvaneshwar. She saw a ring infiltrate and she said it's acanthamoeba. And what you can see below in this plate that it is growing Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, in, uh, and there was no acanthamoeba in the smear at all. Uh, so, uh, you, uh, clinical pictures, pictures, as he said, can be misleading and you can have surprises like this. So, I really believe in the power of direct microscopy, whether you learn it yourself or you take the help of a, a microbiologist, but uh, do that. And uh, this is to show you that even acid fast uh, bacilli, you can just see directly in the smears and make a diagnosis of uh, mycobacteria. Uh, which can be treated, you don't need culture, just 2.5 percent amikacin you treat and they respond well. Uh, culture if at all, it is a difficult thing, we have not been able to do a culture setup in our secondary centers. We are trying but we are finding a lot of uh, difficulties in finding a good technician, microbiologists will never agree to work in secondary centers of an eye hospital. And uh, then to have a setup where you can make media and do the cultures and train the technician is very, very tough. Uh, but at LB Prasad in our, sec uh, our centers, tertiary centers uh, we have and the media that we use are listed here for corneal scrapings. Uh, these are the media we use and we collect uh, these scrapings in the OPD itself. You need to take the media slides and uh, media to the OPD and uh, the ophthalmology under slit lamp magnification, you take the samples and directly you put it on. The, I have never recommended a transport media. Many people ask me why can't we do that. I, I have no experience and I feel it is not going to be very useful. It is small samples because you have to take multiple times and very small quantities. So how would you transport that? and you cannot get good results I feel by transporting. So we do not recommend that. You can collect other samples if patient is using contact lens, you can uh, do that. You can also collect biopsy, corneal buttons, etc. These are some pictures of the method which we use is a KOH with calcofluoride, but this requires a fluorescence microscope. The uh, efficacy and uh, uh, the uh, <coughs> Results are much, much better with the KOH with when it is added with calcofluoride as you can see here. These are nocardia, acid fast organisms. Once you suspect in gram stain, you can do acid fast stain. This mycobacteria I already showed you. And this is another one to show you that uh, fungus, to say it is fungus, the diameter of the filament should be 2 micron or more. A thinner than that is nocardia. So, this I mainly I wanted you to see the diameter of the filaments. Gram stain, it can be gram positive or gram negative. What's important is the filaments and the septa present inside that. So, color is not very important as far as fungus is concerned. When we culture, we always need to follow a criteria whether what we are culturing is significant or not because as was told that bacteria are everywhere. So, you can get as a contaminant also. So, we follow the formula that growth should be plenty, confluent growth of the inoculum and solid media, as you can see large amount of growth or growth, same growth in more than one medium, then we consider it as significant and there should be consistency in what you saw in smear and what has grown in culture. You can't have two different things there and uh, think that it is relevant. Antibiotic susceptibility, people do using uh, curvy bar disc diffusion method, the left side mainly. And we can also do MIC. Uh, this is E test for getting MIC. How do we identify fungus? Uh, actually, you can learn a little bit. The Aspergillus with greenish color. Uh, now we have a, a bug buster group uh, which is in uh, Hyderabad. Uh, we have made for cornea specialists. So we sometimes we send pictures on that. Many people send and looking at the green color. Uh, you can say it is aspergillus flavor. Some of the fungi can be easily identified just looking at the colony. So, this just to give an example of that. This black fungi like alternaria shows you black filaments and even the corneal ulcer can look uh, black on the surface and colonies are also black. Uh, this is candida, you can see yeast which is very rare. In Indian uh, situation, it is just around uh, 
uh, one to two percent of patients may have candida is more common abroad and now i'll just tell you something about what we have been working for the last four five years is pythium some people uh, pronounce this as pythium uh, which looks like fungus but they are very broad and they are aseptate no septa in them or very very few septa may be there uh, what's important is they grow on blood agar not like fungus they just flat and uh, they just have feathery edge but they will be flat and we have developed a method called zoospore formation which is not really necessary for identification but for us to confirm that it is pythium uh, we follow the and this was one of the very exciting days for us uh, when we found this uh, zoospore formation and we have published that uh, almost uh, six seven years back actually uh, so now why is it important uh, a phd student worked on this for four years and we have done animal experiments and many things the most important thing for you is it will not respond to antifungal drugs natamycin will not be useful for this uh, case you need to uh, recognize this and treat with linozolid azithromycin and linozolid so then only it responds microsporidia we already talked about i think you know that keratoconjunctivitis and stromal two types are there keratoconjunctivitis is usually self limiting so even if you see it and clinically it is very very clear with uh, multiple punctate superficial uh, lesions on the cornea uh, whereas in stromal is something which uh, you find very big size of microsporidia again in direct smear is the only way there is no culture available for this uh, we identify only by direct smear and in stromal they, they don't really respond very long history uh, vaccinating and waning they may be thought as viral um, for many times and uh, then they respond uh, they do not respond to the drugs uh, we have tried many things like uh, fumagillin albendazole it doesn't really respond and we have to go for keratoplasty on this we already discussed i'll skip that you can't me by again there is culture which is non nutrient ega it's not very difficult culture actually but you don't see colonies you have to see the plate under the microscope and then find out and uh, you have to learn how it looks under the microscope these are the cysts of acanthamoeba on a non nutrient ega many of the laboratory i'm sure kerala is such a developed state the microbiologists must be having vitec method you know nowadays earlier days when we did md we had to learn how to identify bacteria by biochemical reactions but now we have these machines which make it very easy and very accurate so every lab will be doing similar job and there will be no variation uh, and uh, it's a very good method to do sensitivity as well as uh, identification of bacteria as well as yeast i don't know whether uh, moldy top is available in uh, kerala in any place in hyderabad we have two uh, places where moldy top is available for some organisms like nocardia mycobacteria uh, biochemical reactions we cannot identify vitec also does not identify we need uh, moldy top for that otherwise we just report atypical mycobacteria or nocardia is that uh, am i running out of time yeah yeah so then i'll skip these viral things you know yeah. uh, just want to say that sequencing can be done nowadays because a lot of information is available about uh, uh, dna sequencing and sequencing was the one which helped us identify pythium so unusual new organisms can be identified this is about uh, um, i will just skip this uh, pcr but there might be some labs which are doing pcr and you can send your samples to them uh, i will skip this so it is just good to remember that direct processing without resorting to transport media is a rule discussion with microbiologist prior to sending sample will help and you need to develop your own skills in direct microscopy and you need to tell the microbiologist they must keep the place for long time at least one week or two weeks uh, the cultures otherwise they usually discard in 48 hours with this i thank you for your attention uh, thank you ma'am for the excellent talk very comprehensive and as expected uh, excellent in academic thank you. excellence uh, thank now i call upon dr anita jabbar for her talk on fungal keratitis Okay. 
Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I thank uh, Neil and Dr. Srini for this opportunity. And thank you, ma'am, for a very informative talk, the beginning itself. So we will be in the uh, coming eight minutes, we'll be dealing some points about the fungal keratitis. So fungal keratitis, I can uh, start with the case. This was a microbiologically proven fungal case. This was an elderly lady who presented to us with a very large ulcer, but she was worsening day by day. And within two days, we were planning a therapeutic keratoplasty. And this was the picture when we took up for therapeutic PK. So the way forward in fungal keratitis is, uh, the uh, Aravind, Aravind IK system and uh, many international uh, supporting agencies, they are starting an, an artificial intelligence to prognosticate the corneal ulcer. That means if I see a patient today and if after uh, day after tomorrow, if my colleague sees, there will be some variation between the, our assessments. That is, and to reduce such variability, they are using photographs and computerized methods to develop algorithms in quantification of the ulcer size and the epithelial defect size. And the way forward is to develop an instrument to quantify and also to predict the prognosis and developing an algorithm like what they do OCT in OCT. And also they have uh, shared this, public, published this, like optical smart probes are used. They are nothing but chemicals which are added to your corneal scrapings. And instead of processing in a microbiology, they are observing under fluorescent microscope and uh, they offer a comparative method to gram stain for even with fungus. And this can be used in the satellite centers or uh, your field uh, practices. Coming to the ground reality, the fungal keratitis is more common in tropical countries uh, and in northern India study says aspergillus prevail more while in southern parts of our, our country uh, fusarium is more common and as you all know fungal keratitis is more commonly seen in agrarian workers and those who work in warehouse where they store grains and uh, this uh, potatoes and onions and all. And 10 years before, a study showed that 7 lakh individuals were affected with microbial keratitis yearly. But is it getting much importance? No, because unlike cataract, younger individuals are affected and mostly unilateral and they will have some average vision after resolution. But the morbidity of fungal keratitis is higher than bacterial because of the virulence of the fungus and also no effective antifungal agents. In 1960s, we came across natamycin and still natamycin is our drug of choice. So coming to the classification, they are classified into yeast and molds. What we are uh, in, interested is, um, what we commonly seen are the septate hyphae which are non-pigmented like aspergillus and fusarium. Fungal keratitis, you all know, has a seasonal predilection and coming to the etiopathogenesis, when, uh, when there is breach in security, like uh, a burglar or a thief entering into a house when there is breach in security, like that when there is a defect in the epithelium, in the corneal epithelium, the fungus will come and it will adhere and it will penetrate the stroma and it will form hyphae as well as mycelium and thereafter the host response will come. And the body immune response is equally responsible for the destructions happening there. And as we have studied, symptoms in fungal keratitis is lesser as compared to signs. What is the reason? What could be the reason? Bacterium being smaller in size, it is readily engulfed by the polymorphonuclear leukocytes and sets in the inflammation faster, whereas the size of the fungus is larger and the inflammation can happen later. So what are the signs? There will be some cases will present as non-specific infiltration. Some cases will present as a pseudodendrite. So this uh, lower picture I have shown is a typical dendrite of an HSP keratite, keratitis. Uh, like it, it is will, like, like a dancing mermaid, long, linear, branching uh, infiltrate affecting the center part of the cornea, whereas a pseudodendrite in a fungal, fungal keratitis will be more shorter, stockier, will have a broad base and it is called flower pot dendrite. And what is the hallmark of uh, uh, fungal keratitis? Yes, it is the feathery edges. So this is an ulcer with a typical feathery edges. And sometimes the pseudodendrite can be better seen when you stain only. Sometimes they present as a raised dry surface like something sitting on the cornea as a plaque. And the lesion becomes wet when the inflammation progresses like this. 
Sometimes they present with satellite lesions or an immune ring or an endothelial plaque, which is very, very non-specific. If it is pigmented, the diagnosis is very clear. So as Madam has already described, what are the lab diagnoses? For screening, you can use the, either the light microscopy or the fluorescent microscopy. Light microscopy, you can use different stains, KOH, Grams, GMSA and GMS or the Gomari methanamine silver stain. This picture shows a typical sugarcane-like or a bamboo-like uh, septate branching filaments. In high mag, you can make out the septate as well as the branching. And if you have a fluorescent microscope, you can use fluorescent dyes like calcophore white staining for better delineation of the fungal tribe. These are all culture. The left side picture shows aspergillus culture and the aspergillus conidia, like a club shaped. It is called as it is uh, resembles aspergillum of the priest used to uh, spray holy water. And uh, the right side picture shows physiorium colonies and the boat shaped or the uh, sickle shaped conidia. This is the typical confocal picture of a fungal hyphae that is the linear hyperfluorescent images which can be uh, which is branching at right angles. PCR, as Madam was telling, it, is, it requires a smaller test sample size and rapid in diagnosis. But the limitation is artificial amplification of non-pathogenic organisms. This is a busy slide that shows the medical management. The more commonly used topical agents are the natamycin, amphotericin B and voriconazole. But the lesson learned from the mycotic ulcer treatment trial is natamycin is better than moriconazole for filamentous fungus. And they showed that natamycin treatment was associated with significantly better clinical and microbiological outcomes, especially in fusarium cases. And moriconazole should not be used as a monotherapy in filamentous keratitis. So when you see a fungal ulcer, to see if it is healing or responding to treatment, first thing is to look at the edges. So, in these serial photographs, initial picture shows flared margins or feathery margins. Later on, there will be blunting of the margins, the scarring at the edges, epithelial defect is decreasing and, the, and thereafter scarring sets in. So, if you find the non-healing ulcer, always think of uncontrolled diabetes, chronic dacryocystitis or contamination of medication. So, the, your pseudomonas can contaminate your um, anatomate bottle. Intrastromally, moriconazole and amphotericin are available, uh, but RCTs have shown that there is no added benefit of adjunct intrastromal antifungals. Oral antifungals, what we treat is with ketoconazole, boriconazole, fluconazole or itraconazole. The duration of treatment will be 14 to 21 days and LFT should be monitored. But the MUD2 trial shows no, no benefit of adding oral boriconazole to topical antifungals for severe fungal keratitis. But uh, Dr. Namrata Sharma has popularized this TST protocol, the topical systemic targeted therapy like uh, as the first line of treatment, you can use uh, topical natamycin because it is equally effective for uh, aspergillus and fusarium. And uh, in severe ulcers, you can add either or oral uh, antifungals. Second line of treatment is addition of another topical agent like voriconazole. Third line of treatment can be targeted treatment like the intrastromal or intracameral antifungals. And fourth line of treatment is the therapeutic PK. The PAC season or the photoactivated chromophore for keratitis cross-linking can be used as a potential alternative or adjunct treatment in difficult to treat fungus. And rose bengal PDT also have a potential to inhibit fungal biofilm formation. That's all for today. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. That was quite extensive and you covered all the main points pretty well. Uh, now I would call upon Dr. Uh, Malikarjun Heralki for his talk on Acanthamoeba keratitis. So we all know that Acanthamoeba has a very different profile in the West versus what is seen in our country. I hope Dr. Malikarjun is going to uh, do this. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Anil and uh, Dr. Srini for this opportunity. Acanthamoeba is a ubiquitous organism. It is found anywhere. It is found in uh, uh, soil, mud, and even in uh, even you can find it in, in this room also. So whenever it gets opportunity, it invades the eye. So if you see the uh, life cycle of the Akanta viva, it, it is a, it presents in two ways: the actively multiple multiplication of a multiple form of topozoites and the quiescent uh, uh, form in the cyst. 
the diagnosis is a contamination is usually uh, missed or delayed so that's how uh, we treat it uh, in other way and also the patient's uh, uh, lifestyle and uh, quality also will be affected if you see the epidemiology, uh, epidemiology if you see this uh, uh, world map contamination is common in our country it is not that uh, uncommon and only in india and somewhere in africa it is uh, highly prevalent. If you see in USA and other countries, it is less than India. So, we have to consider academic keratitis in every uh, ulcer we see. And uh, if you see the literature, the risk factors, uh, uh, they, what they specify, uh, what they, uh, they uh, write is contact lens, contact lens, contact lens. That is not there in our country. That we have to remember. So, the risk factors in our country are exposure to contaminated water or soil or trauma and other risk factors are warmer weather and poor socioeconomic condition which is our country and uh, the signs and symptoms of uh, academic keratitis so again in textbooks we usually read uh, a history of contact lens wear out of proportion of pain radial keratoneuritis and ring infiltrate that are not much seen in indian uh, scenario so if you see, usually the acanth amoeba enters at the uh, epithelial level. It invades the epithelium. There it forms the epithelial keratitis. If you don't recognize and treat it, then it will form the goes. It progresses and form the ring infiltrate and all other uh, form of uh, keratitis. In early stage, it can present with punctuate epithelial erosions, anterior stromal hage, numeral keratitis, and varial stromal edema. Just it can present with a stromal edema. In low stage, if you don't stay, uh, treat in early stage, it can present with ring infiltrates, necrotizing keratitis, or diffuse infiltrate keratitis. These, these are the early stages. In the first case, it is under, you can see just uh, uh, dendritic form. In just you can present as a dendritic. It will be commonly mis, uh, misdiagnosed as uh, viral keratitis. And in the second picture, it is, a, is also a cantamoeba. It is presenting with just a stromal edema and it can also present as epithelial erosions and also keratoneuritis. It is very important to diagnose with keratoneuritis. If you see this edema and the radial lines, radial lines, the radial lines, there are keratoneuritis. So, the acanthema uh, organism is traveling along the uh, uh, nerves and it is causing inflammation and will have a more pain. In late stage, it can present uh, as a ring infiltrate and necrotizing uh, keratitis. It can present in many ways. So, many other typical ways it can present. It can present uh, in a non-contact lens where and it can be a bilateral presentation. It can just present without pain. That you have to remember. And it can present after uh, exam laser uh, correction and also like, yeah, like a central toxic keratopathy. Differential diagnosis, as uh, earlier speakers have told, it can uh, it can mimic any uh, all uh, many organs like herpetic keratitis, fungal keratitis, bacterial keratitis, or uh, even contact lens associated keratitis. Laboratory diagnosis is very important, as Dr. Sajit Sharma Madam has told. Simple KOH mount, if you do properly, you can find out the acanthomyza cyst, and it can be stained with Gimsa stain and also Gram stain. In Gimsa stain, it looks like a uh, blue round dot with surrounding white uh, hollow around it and the, the, that, uh, that is the cyst, cyst it looks and in the topozoites it looks like a uh, inflammatory cells and the specific stains like calculophyte, acrid orange and also be used and uh, PCR and other molecular methods also we can be used and in confocal microscopy you can directly visualize the organisms even cyst and uh, topozoite you can be organizing it is specificity is in sensitivity is 80 to 100 uh, percent and culture is uh, classically non mutant agar with E. coli overlay because these organisms they thrive on E. coli so even in culture part you can see that uh, when you put a E. coli they can just travel towards the E. coli. You can see that uh, line in the culture plate. Medical management is mainly aimed at treating, you should remember, you should be aimed at treating both cysts and topozoites. So, commonly used is biogonoids. It is more common, it is most uh, uh, effective against topozoites, not so against cysts. 
and uh, you have uh, a diabetes uh, like a proper marine and hexamidin can be used uh, as well as varicanozal can be used it is a cysticidal and um, among amino acids neomycin can be used some authors are happy with uh, monotherapy some authors are happy with combination of phmb and proper marine and uh, the treatment required for the second time of it to cure is very long so once you diagnose and once you start ulcer uh, start healing at least it will take 3 to 4 months to completely heal and recently uh, mil uh, miltofacin which is uh, approved by for uh, leishmaniasis treatment is also uh, shown to be very effective against so uh, uh, acanthamoeba this is a phib i commonly used and it will be available in 20% solution uh, as a uh, uh, swimming pool disinfectant so i do a double dilution method it is a 20% solution we have to make it 0.02% first i make it uh, 2% by adding uh, point my 9 ml of uh, normal saline to 1 ml of 20% solution from that 0.1 ml of that solution is added to 9.9 ml ml of artificial tears or saline and that can be kept for uh, maximum for one week and it should it should be stored in the refrigerator not in the freezer and this is a one case acanthamoeba classically presented with ring infiltrate and laboratorily it was proven as acanthamoeba then P, uh, started on phmb it did, did not respond then we started on varicanola then it uh, slowly started pro, uh, uh, responding surgical uh, management uh, is uh, done when the, it is not it doesn't respond with the man, uh, medical management in early stages you can consider dal and make sure that you, all the infected area should be removed even the recipient bed should not have a Uh, organisms or infected area. In advanced cases, you can go for PKP. And in heel uh, acanthamoeba arthritis, wait for six months to do a uh, optical PKP or DALC. In conclusion, AK is not a rare. Always keep in mind as acanthamoeba is a different diagnosis in any infective arthritis, so that you won't miss that acanthamoeba. And early diagnosis helps in successful management. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir, for that. Uh A guidelines on the practical management of acanthamoeba keratitis and thank you again for sticking to time now i call upon uh, dr mathu for his talk on surgical management of infectious keratitis very good afternoon to all of you in the next few minutes i think i'll cover therapeutic keratoplasty now that you have seen all the speakers speak about the medical management this is the last frontier in the management of infective keratitis when nothing works then you have to do a tpk so i also come from a place that looks like kerala the godavari districts and uh, in this district itself you have lot of fungus that is marking around in this fields and our agricultural laborers do often come with a lot of fungal ulcers so the scope of this talk would be under the following headings and uh, i was fortunate to be trained under dr m s sir who is the longest practicing corneal surgeon in india till date and i think uh, fungal keratitis as all the previous speakers told is more common and severe and these are the uh, cases that require transplant more when compared to other microorganisms because at least 20 to 40% of fungal keratitis will end up with a tpk and uh, outcomes are poorer especially in cases where you have a uh, larger ulcers and the cost of treatment also when you take into account the fungal keratitis costs nearly three times more and paradoxically it affects the poorer people more when compared to the richer people so in our practice we see around 3 to 4 new ulcers every day and we operate on a tpk alternate day or daily nowadays so before going into tpk i would suggest that you try some methods like the interstromal injections and if you have very small perforations glue with bcl or tenon patch graft because tpk is really the last thing you want to do on a patient being a very challenging surgery so this is the interstromal injection this is the preservative free ozol that is available from oral lab so if you see here with a 30 gauge needle you go to the edges of the ulcer in 360 degrees you try to hydrate it like your side port wounds and see that beautiful hydration that is seen so usually it takes around 2 to 3 injections and deep ulcers most of them heal well negating the need for a tpk and sometimes if it doesn't heal with the second or third that is when you have to decide to go in for a therapeutic graft so that demonstrates the interstromal varicozol next is the glue with bcl so if you have a, a, a perforation like this 
perforation actually from the microbiological standpoint of view is the best thing that can happen to an ulcer because it renders the ulcer sterile. So in this situation you can plan for a good quality tissue and plan for a optical grade tissue and plan for a PK instead of a therapeutic grade tissue but make sure that the margins are well covered. Before that you can salvage the eye by using a tenon patch graft or a glue with BCL. Now coming to the therapeutic keratoplasty the main aim of this is to eliminate infection and not visual rehabilitation. So don't bother about uh, how much tissue you are taking or how much aggressively you are going here. But the, remember that whenever you are going to do an uh, TPEG that is more than 9 millimeters, it is the results are definitely going to be unpredictable and the it's go mostly going to be an eye saving procedure rather than a visually rehabilitative procedure. But in our practice, uh, it's sad that we usually give our therapeutic grafts to our PGs, uh, PGs or even fellows. That should not be the case because if you see in future, I think TPK would be the only surgery that corneal surgeons would be doing. Because rokinase inhibitors and endothelial cells, DSEC is gone with cross-linking and uh, scleral contact lenses, DALC is gone, cyanbus is disappearing, the scars that are there. So I think if you want to be a corneal surgeon, you have to be good in your TPKs. That's the only surgery you'll be doing. So now when do you do it? That's the question. So what we usually follow is once you identify the organism by the beautiful things shown by the previous speakers, you know the organism. You have given the correct treatment, you wait only for two weeks. At least it should stabilize or you should see some signs of resolution. It doesn't definitely uh, uh, implicate in case of acanthamy but required, but usually in fungal cases if you are in the right track, you see some signs of resolution within two weeks. In our case what we do is topical natomycin, loriconazole, itraconazole, systemically also we give some antifungal along with doxy for its anti-MMP activities, regular debridement and we try two interstromal loriconazoles. If it doesn't work, that is then we take a call for TPK. So this is the procedure of uh, TPK. So preoperatively it's very important that you get a good hypotony and you also get a good block especially you need a good facial block so that the patient doesn't squeeze and whenever you are giving a preoperative manitol make sure that the patient also goes to the toilet before he comes into the OT that's a very practical thing otherwise you'll end up with a bedpan on the OT and uh, this is the thing that once you do the cutting make sure that you peel off all these uh, things that are there in the iris this is the most challenging thing because this will cause lots of a bleeding and next important thing is create PIS especially if the eye is fake and also make sure that they form the angle well by sweeping the edges. So these are the uh, things that you have to follow and also when you are doing the trephination look for the actual extent. Sometimes the endo exudates and hypopion will give you a false scope of the extent. So go with the paracentesis, clear off the AC and then look for the ulcer proper and then try to oversize the trephination by 1 to 1.5 millimeters. Right? Next, what are the intraoperative complications that you can have? One is the bleeding from the iris that can obscure your visibility. Next is the lens expulsion. Then you have the dreaded complication of an expulsive or suprachoroidal hemorrhage being an open sky technique. So this is the video of uh, lens expulsion. Lens expulsions usually follow cases of uh, perforations where the entire lens iris diaphragm comes and attaches to the endothelium. In those cases, if you don't release the uh, adhesions and directly go ahead with surgery, this is what can happen. Still, uh, whenever something like this happens, try to create a capsular opening and try to retain the PC at least because once you are retaining the PC, you are still maintaining the separation of anterior chamber and the posterior chamber and not allowing the infection to go behind the PC. So that is one important thing. And uh, maybe the retina, the vitreous surgeons will not agree, but despite of mannitol and other things, if I find the whole globe is still very hard, I don't hesitate in doing a vitreous tap and making the globe soft. It gives me at least 20 to 30 minutes of hypotony to finish off my first 8 to 12 sutures. That is one practical point you can implement. Next, even in cases like total corneal ulcers, do not lose hope. Sometimes uh, these patients also can recover well. So this is the case where you can see that the ulcer is totally from limbus to limbus. But still in these cases, you just have to do a freehand dissection and put in the entire uh, bulk of the tissue and those you can see the index dates 
here you can use the hydro cannula to gently help you while you are lifting these egg grates and they peel off well from the iris and this uh, definitely would require a glaucoma drainage device or trabeclectomy eventually all these large grafts the post operative care because most of them are fungal you cannot start on steroids you can still use uh, cyclosporin and tacrolimus in these cases iop uh, control is very important in these cases and try to use uh, drugs that have BAK because those have uh, antifungal properties. So in take home is whenever you have given maximum medical therapy try to act early. Don't let the fungus expand till the limbus and do a perforation. When things are under control you try to do it. Pre-op hypotony is important. Grafts about 9 meters will definitely have a poorer prognosis. Try to regain the angle by the 1 mm endothelial skid that Mark Terry has described. Post-op infection and IOP control is important. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you Madhu. That was an excellent talk. I think we have a few minutes for some Q questions. I, re I really liked uh, Dr. Malikarjun's uh, slides. The last slide where he had put the second point was that whatever may you may think clinically the ulcer is, you have to investigate for acanthamoeba also. Uh, by doing that, we have done that for years now. I don't go by the clinical impression of the ophthalmologist because we have fellows coming who are just new and there are... Uh, experience of ophthalmology so we can't be depending on them to decide what test to do so we don't do that we have a method which is common for whether it is non it, it has to be non-viral that's why i called it non-viral actually whether it is bacterial fungal or acanthamoeba you do all the investigations which will give you anything no you always think of acanthamoeba in all cases yeah. By doing that, we have been able to get much more acanthamoeba. There are people who tell me that they don't get acanthamoeba because they will only uh, do selectively, some clinically thinking. So you wait for ring infiltrate or you wait for uh, uh, these uh, neuritis, uh, uh, radial neuritis or things like that, then you will uh, not, you will be missing a lot. They look so much like fungal and other things. Yeah, uh, I think we need to wind up now. Before we close the show, uh, just a brief, a quick uh, memento presentation to Dr. Sabitri. Anita, can you do the honors? Is it a coconut? <laughs> okay, to uh -uh. that's okay. That's okay, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll take. Uh now to Dr. Malligarj. Uh Malligarjun sir is already finished. Okay. Dr. Madhu, uh, can you please come? Invite Dr. Anil to give a memento to Dr. Madhu. And thank you for the attendance. Thanks a lot.